I've damn near walked this world around Another city, another town Another friend to say goodbye Another girl to sit and cry And as many miles I've spent on this road As many a mile I have gone Mike's Music Method Come on in everybody Guys, we have an amazing song. I did not know this song. So a double thanks to Nate Bieneman. Bieneman? Bieneman? Nate Bieneman, double thanks. He sponsored this song and he turned me on to it. If you guys want to sponsor a song, likesmusicmethod.com. Do it. Get a song done. Share it with the community. But Nate, thank you for turning me on to this song. What a beautiful voice this guy has. This is a really great song. By the end of this video, not only will you know this song, but you will be just a master of these inversions, and inversions are so beautiful and moody. For example, a C chord, you put the G in the bass, and it goes from being generically happy to being more pensive. And he does it with the D instead of being generically happy, throw the F sharp in the bass. Ooh, way more thoughtful. And so he does the same thing with C. Instead of a C, you got the E in the bass. They're moody chords. So you'll be an expert at your G, C, D inversions, that D with the thumb over the top. And guys, this is a beautiful song. It is not a beginner one, so always check out that Travis Picking playlist first. Go through maybe, I'd say the first seven, and then you're probably ready to tackle this one. Hard to know exactly. But guys, this is cool. There's a lot of great right hand work, plus some really novel stuff going on with the left hand too, where he's doing some cool walks on the C and the D that... um you don't usually hear in this genre. So thanks again to Nate. If you're new to Mike's Music Method, I always say use the timestamps. They're your best friends. What I'm doing here is literally I'm walking you measure by measure through every freaking note that Patrick plays. And if there's some measures you got down right away, we'll use the timestamps to jump ahead to the parts that are more difficult for you. In this video, we do a few different things. We've got the measure by measure breakdown. Then we're gonna jump to the chord chart that'll help you piece it together while you're singing. And then at the very end, I always do the slow run through. So when you learn a bit of a segment, go to that slow run through at the end. And then before you start singing it, make sure you check out that middle section. I'll just label it like chord chart. And that way you can just generically do the chords and start singing before we combine the picking with it. So this is a full lesson on this song. It's a great song. If you guys don't know it, go listen to it. It's a beautiful little tune. Without further ado, Many a Mile by Patrick Sky. Thank you, Nate. Bijou, trying out the two camera system today. Let me know what you all think. All right, so measure one is just a pickup beat. We got a G chord. I'm pinching six and two, with thumb and middle. Then I got pointer, then thumb on the fourth string. And for all you noobs here, it's basically a Travis pick, so the thumb's always bouncing. So I got that little pickup beat, then measure two. We go to the D chord with the F sharp in the bass. It looks like this. So the way I'm doing it is I'm not worrying about the high E string here. I could do my thumb over the top, or I could do my middle finger here or my pointer finger. No right or wrong way to do this chord shape here. So just kind of play it however you are used to it. I tend to do it this way on the nylon string, but um, I also do the thumb over the top. So whatever works here. Just know that it's a D chord, you don't need the high E. Three, two, and then two on the lowest string there. D slash F sharp chord. I'm pinching six and three, and that's gonna sound both of the second frets there. Then my thumb goes alone on the fourth, and then I do six, two, three, or sorry, four. So pinching six and three, thumbs alone on four, then it's six, two, four. Into the rhythm here, three, four, Measure three, things start getting fun here. Got this cool little Patrick Sky maneuver, very unique to him. I can't say I've seen this before. 
I am pinching six and, or sorry, I can't get my numbers straight today. I'm pinching four and two. Both of them are open. And he's hammering into a C chord there. Now, I'm not really hammering onto that low one, but just think of it as like a C chord without that, you know, third finger there. So I'm using my thumb and middle there and hammering on to one on the B string and two on the D string. And both of them happen together. Then I'm hitting open and I'm lifting the chord there, open on the second string. Then that ending part, so hammer, second string open. Then I'm doing second fret on the G string with my pointer finger, then hitting that C, third fret on the fifth string, the A string with my thumb. is two on the G string, three on the fifth. And I'm kind of holding both of those down. Doing pointer, thumb, whole measure together. Three, four. Weird rhythm. We got one and 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 four. So from the top, three, four. Measure four goes back to the G chord here. So I'm starting on the G by pinching six and three. Then I'm pinching four and two. So I'm doing thumb pointer, then thumb middle. So first half of the measure, nice and hoppy. Then I'm doing six, three, thumb pointer, and then I'm pinching four and two, thumb and middle. Last, uh, you know, right here I'm going back to that C chord. So we got the G chord, C chord with the G in the bass. So that whole measure, three, four. One more time, three, four. Put the chord down at the end there. Measure five. It's going to feel weird because... It's a great folk song, and Patrick Sky, like Dylan and all these great songwriters, um, he changes up the kind of like the rhythmic pulse. Uh, it's like unexpected, even though it's still in 4-4, four, four, it doesn't really feel that way. We are back to the G chord. We don't even need the, the low note at the beginning, but we're going to put it down because it's coming. We're pinching 4 and 2. They're both sounding open. All right, so already kind of weird because we're starting off, we're kind of like coming out of that hammer-on that he just did. that G to C and he's lifting it, 4 and 2, and then the next pattern is 6, 3, 4, 2, so I got 4 and 2 open, 6, 3, 4, 2, and that was thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, then he just goes back to 6, 3, thumb, pointer, so all together, 3, 4, Here in measure six, we go to a D chord again with the F sharp and the bass. Let's do that. I'm going to pinch six and two. Pointer finger hits the third string. Thumb on the fourth, right back to the second string. So six and two. Third, fourth, back to two. Let's pinch, thumb and middle. Once you get that down, practice that for a minute. Second half of the measure is six, three, four, two, but I'm going to lift the chord, and that last note sounds open. He's actually going to hammer into the next chord, but we'll get there in a minute. I'm sorry. Three, four. Yeah. A little review. Let's try the whole thing from the top so we don't get lost. Three. Four. Yeah. All right, so let's keep going here. We are in measure five, six, seven. So we came out of measure six with that open, and we're just going to hammer it into it in measure seven. 
a C chord there. So open to one on the second string, open on the third string, second fret on the fourth. So just arpeggiating that C chord. Then he lifts the first finger. I kind of lift the whole chord there. So then we open on the second string. Then we add what we did before. That note A, second fret, third string, and the note C, third fret, fifth string. Let's try it from the hammer on. Three, four, and. Sorry, three, four, and, and four. Yeah, you guys got it. Next measure here, measure eight. Start on the G, pinch six and three. And I'm pinching four and two, both of them are open, but I hammer into that C chord, right? So both of those, again, C with, I keep the G in the bass. Open and open, go to one and two. So it's six and three. Six and three, four and two, and then hammering. And then the second half, he just holds down that chord and he does six, three, four, two. Thumb pointer, thumb middle. You guys are seeing the patterns now, aren't you? Measure nine, we get some pretty unique stuff here from Patrick. I really like this part. It's a C chord, but rarely do you get the C chord where you're banging out that open E in the bass, so it's a C slash E chord. Whatever, it's an inversion, a C chord, but a different note in the bass that isn't the root of the chord. Here the E is the third, but we'll save inversions for another day. And we're just gonna play measure nine here. A few different ways to finger this. Let's talk about it here for a second though. What I'm doing is I just got a C chord. I'm not even bothering with my ring finger. With my ring finger though, right? It's just open E. But those other two notes in the C chord are the same here. And I'm doing six, three, four, two. We've seen that a bunch. And I'm gonna do the same thing again, but now I have the second fret on that low E string. Six, three, four. Now that four is open because I used that finger there. So six, three, four, two. Lifting that middle finger to the sixth string. Six, three, four, two. I don't even know what you call this chord here. Maybe like a D, what do I have marked down? Like a D sus four with the F sharp in the bass, because it's kind of like, well, it's kind of like a D7, actually. D7, but with the G in it, no, it uh, doesn't make any sense. It's not a sus4. I labeled it wrong. Uh, the G would make it, what, an 11? D, E, F, G, that's 11. D7, D, that 11. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm not a jazz player, but it's got the 11 in there. That's all that I'm trying to say. To measure 10 back to a G chord, 6, 3, 4, 2. We're going to cruise through this same thing, but as a C chord, right, with a G in the bass, just add those two fingers here and then do the same 6, 3, 4, 2. So let's do 9 and 10 together because I think you got it. 3, 4, to the G, make it a C, we keep the G in the bass. Then back to that C slash E here and measure 11. This is the only different part here. I'm, I think I'm hearing that last note is open. Kind of hard to tell in the recording, but this first part's the same. But I think he's lifting that pointer finger and doing that second string open on the last note. Otherwise, it's identical to measure nine. So close to being done with this intro. Two more measures. We go back to a G here and measure whatever we're at. Twelve. We have that G. Six, three, four, two, six, three. And I'm putting my pinky down on the third fret of the B string. Let's end the intro here with measure 13 back to the D slash F sharp. So we got it normal here. D slash F sharp is six, three, four, two, six, three, four. Then the two is open giving us the B, which is what, D, F, G, A, B, <laughs> 13. <laughs> now, folk players, we're not thinking about that stuff, right? We just know how to add our colors. Well, here, let's do an F sharp. So we know how to 
how to add those cor those notes in open position, or at least I hope you do. You should learn that. Check out my Travis Picking Primer up here. There's a great video to get you finger picking through a lot of different chord tones. Um, if you don't know what they're called, that's fine, because we're just coloring things. Um, you can call that whole thing a D chord, and he's just moving color through it. Doesn't matter too much. We're not playing jazz, just folk. Donation pitch. Guys, what we do here at Mike's Music Method is the value for value model. And what that means is I'm putting in my talent, my treasure, uh, my time, and I'm hoping that you give some of that back in return. Maybe it's just a beautiful email encouraging me. Those go a long way. But another thing you could do is become a monthly donor to the channel. This could be 50 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month, a dollar a month, whatever is in your budget. But the whole idea here is I want to keep these videos free for everybody. And I know that that's been a, an amazing thing for a lot of people. There's just people who can't pr financially prioritize music. There's young kids who don't even have jobs yet. And without this stuff behind a paywall, it's reaching so many people. And guys, I get the most, I mean, just check the comments below these videos. People are seriously learning from this channel and getting great value from it. And I want to keep going. I want to make more videos. I always want to keep this stuff free. I take a lot of time to transcribe these tabs, write them all out, to make these videos, edit these videos. There's gear required. And I feel like this is my talent set. So guys, help me share this talent with the world and help other people learn. Another way to think about it is like a, it, when you give to me, it's almost like a charitable act because you're, by you guys giving, you're helping me to make more that are gonna stay free. So when you guys help you know, give to the channel, that way I'm able to, you're buying me time to make these videos and keep them free for everybody else. So when you donate, just keep in mind that you're helping share this video with hundreds if not thousands of people. I mean, I have over a million views at this point. Any minute in any day, any second of any day, there's like four people out there in the world watching this dumb mug and learning this awesome content. I'm trying to keep these classics alive. Whatever, I'm going to stop now. You guys get the idea. It's the value for value model. Please consider. All right, like I said at the beginning of this video, we are going to get through the verse, a little meticulous here, but then later on we will have a chord chart and I'll put it all together with the lyrics. But for now... Let's kind of keep going. We're going to cruise through this verse. A lot of repeat material. Measure 14, just the G chord. 6, 3, 4, 2, 6, 3, 4, 2. Then do a C chord. 5, 3, 4, 2, 5, 3, 4, 2. But I'm going to lift that pointer finger on the last hit to make that beautiful C major 7. Then back to the G chord here in 16. Same thing in 17. But then we put our pinky down fret on the second string to get that high G in there. Cool. Then 18, we got the D slash F sharp here. Six, three, four, two, six. Here it's a little goofy because there's two ways to do it. The way I have it written and the way I'm hearing it, but I, I could be wrong. It's hard with the vocals so loud in the mix is it ends up looking just like this. I got my first finger on the first fret of the, of the B string. And then my thumb's playing that F sharp, that low second fret on that string. So it starts as a normal D with the F sharp in the bass, six, three, four, two. But then I get rid of my middle finger and put that pointer finger down there. So I have that and that. And it's six, three, four, two. Do that again. Six, three, four, two. Then it's six, three, four. Then when I do the last uh, B string here, I lift that first finger and play it open. So from 18, three, four. goofy. Now what I was going to say, if you hold down that A the whole time, right, that middle finger note, that's fine. And then I only lifted it at the end with the other one. Hard to tell in the recording exactly what chord he's playing. 20 goes back to the G where you have the pinky. Then here, this is what's confusing because now in measure 21, I'm hearing the normal D, 6, 3, 4, 2. But now I'm hearing him only lift the pinky. I'm still hearing that second fret. That's why I'm like second guessing myself because I'm hearing it two different ways throughout the song. So hard to tell. So there I'm only lifting that pinky. Then 22, we go to a G chord. And I'm doing a hammer on on the 
fifth string from open to two. And then the thumb does four after that. So hammer on five, open to two, then thumb again on four, and the second string with my middle finger. So three, four. Yeah, you got it. And then in measure 23, back to a C chord. Five, three, four, two, five, three, four, two, but lift that pointer finger. Here it's a little more complicated in 24. This one's cool. So I need to make it a whole video. I'm gonna link to it here. If it's not here and you're watching this, comment down below and harass me. Say, Mike, you never made that video. But I call this a compound movement and it happens all the time in these folk songs where I'm gonna hammer on one string, but even though I'm only hammering on the second string, at the same time I do the hammer, I'm gonna play a different string. I, I generically call it like a compound uh, hit or movement or whatever. And there's probably a better word for it. Um, but here's what it looks like. We got the G chord here at the beginning of 24. Six, three, four, two. Now I'm gonna hammer on, open to one on that second string. But the moment I hammer, I'm also hitting the sixth string. So I'm not re-hitting that second string, I'm just using the power of that hammer on and I'm only hitting the sixth as I do it. So after I do that compound movement, I do the third string open, then I put... So let me double back there. <laughs> Normally you would do that, but I think in this case, I think he's actually hammering down the whole chord there, like back into that C chord. So I'm doing both of those together. Then it's three, And then I'm gonna lift the chord <laughs> and play the second string open. So you got that hammer on, and then you lift it up again at the end. This whole time the G's staying down, but the other two are hammering and lifting. Three, four, hammer the whole chord and hit. Then lift the chord up to get that final note. One more time, three, four. I think you guys got it, 25, we've seen this a bunch. Seen this one before, 26. He actually just repeats the D without any funny business there a couple times in a row. Boom. Join the Discord, guys. Discord is a great way to engage in the community. The comment sections only go so far, but on Discords, we can share videos of ourselves playing, comment on it, give each other tips. I'm also sharing a lot of content that I don't put on here, usually just small little helpful PDFs. And I'm always on there, so I'm happy. If you have any concerns, make a video of yourself, post it to the Discord, and I'm happy to give you pointers and troubleshoot. And there's also the weekly Thursday Zoom meetings that everyone is invited to underneath this video in the video description. You can find all that info. We hang out, shoot the breeze on Thursdays, listen to music, talk about music, and I answer some of your guitar-related questions. As you're 27, we can keep that thumb over the top if you're using your thumb. You hit that F sharp, sixth string. And then we're gonna do like a C chord, but we only need these top two fingers, right? One and two. And I'm pinching those with thumb in the middle, so. Then you lift those, hit the same two strings, the D and the B again. Both of them are open. Then we move to the third and fifth string, and we do two and three, kind of like how we stag staggered them earlier in the song. But here we pinch them together, so it's. G, pinching six and three, then pinching four and two. And then it goes like normal. Six, three, four, two. Then we got measure 29, same thing. Then here we start the chorus. Remember, we will sing all of this at the end when I throw the chord chart up here. But not yet, we're just learning it. So we got 30, just that D chord, does it four times. Takes us all the way to 32. Starts the same, six, three, four, two, six. Then I'm pinching four and two, but I make it the C chord with the G in the bass. Then 33, this is gonna feel weird. He does a lot of weird things. It's still in four, four, even though the rhythm's gonna throw you off, because now we're pinching at, on a one beat, we're hitting the fourth string with our thumb, so it throws off the whole thing. Four and two are open in measure 33. Then he does a normal six, three, four, two, then it's six, three. So again, we've seen the material, but it's on different beats here. It's like one, two, and three, and four, and three, four, pinch, two, and three, and four. Yeah, 
three fours back to the D. But we just end on the thumb, no and beat. Then we got that other cool walk again. Those two notes in the C chord, both of them open. Back to that two and three on the G and A string. Then we do 30 measure 36. You've seen that before. Six string pinch. Six, three, four, two. Getting there, guys. Uh, 37 we've seen before. 38. Cool, we have another compound movement here. We got the normal D, six, three, four, two. But then we do six, three, four. Then the second string is open. All right, that's open. Sorry, no compound movement here. <laughs> Just a normal hammer on, sorry. So after we end that open. So we'll do that ending again. Six, three, four, two, six, three, four. B string, third string is open, fourth string is that second fret like a C chord, then back to open on the sec string, second string. Same little walk as we did earlier in the song, right? Right? Then we go to measure 40. Here is where it's tricky. So the end of 40, 40 starts the same, six, pinch four and two. Six, three, four. We're gonna practice this a bunch. We're ending with open on the second string and we hammer into measure 41 and it's a compound movement here. This is where I thought we were going. So hammer on into the whole chord. But right when I hammer, I'm also hitting the thumb on the sixth string. Now you might be hammering like this. That's totally fine. It doesn't have to be the thumb. All right, I've done it enough. <laughs> Then right after that compound movement, we hit the third string with our pointer finger. Right, so then it ends up just being like six, three, four, two, six, three, four, two. So the pattern is the same, but that little hammer at the beginning makes it seem totally different. So just make sure you're practicing that a bunch. I've already done a hundred times, but you're gonna have to do it a hundred more to get it good, all right? So. Got it. And then that happens again. Cool. So that's the verse in the chorus. That is the bulk of the song. All of that loops and repeats a bunch, but there's different endings. So we go back to the verse, do the chorus, but then ending two instead of ending one is here in your free tab at mikesmusicmethod.com and measure 43. And we just end on a normal G. Six, three, four, two, six, three, four. Then we go to the D slash F sharp, pinch, thumb. Pinching six to three, thumb alone on four, six to four. Got that in your noodle. Measure 45, cool little hammer on on that top part of the C. Then back to the open on those two strings. Then that little stagger, three, four. Cool. Now, I know for some of you guys, you're just gonna be like, holy cow, are we really doing every measure right now? We are. And the beauty of YouTube is that you can skip ahead if some of this is easy and you can jump to the harder measures that you're having trouble with. If you're a beginner, all of this might be totally out of your element and that's why I do every measure just so it's there for everybody at all skill levels. 46 is a very difficult measure. So let's break this down. Measure 46, this is quite confusing here. I think it's not that hard. We got the G chord, six, pinch four and two. C. And then we have six, three, then I'm gonna hit the four, but I'm quickly pulling off two to open. And when I'm doing that pull off, I'm actually pulling off both of these fingers in my left hand here. Right, even though I'm not sounding the second string, I'm still gonna pull off that pointer finger there. So that second half of the measure is six, three, pulling them both off. And then right after I do the pull off, the second string open so it's like I'm going quickly back to the G chord one more time for the top real slow three four and it actually is a 16th note right it happens really fast it's like the pull off is just kind of a little frill in there
seven back to a G. Back into that hammer and on with the compound movement into the D. And here we do another compound movement into that slide. So the end of 48 we have open and I'm just hammering one to two, like implying that C chord, but at the same time I'm hitting my thumb on the fourth string. different dance here on 49 for the for the little fill. So it's hammer on, thumb up at the same time, then open on the third string, thumb goes back to four, then lift it up, open on the second, and then that two, three walk. Let's go from the end of 48, or from all of 48, three, four, yet again back to a verse and then we're gonna do ending three so you notice it's always like verse chorus verse chorus yes of course some of the verses are gonna be different please don't email me with this one being like hey Mike in measure 47 the third time around I know he it's not gonna be exactly the same every time but I wasn't gonna write out every verse and obsess about it plus when we at the end here or later in the video when we go over the chord chart um, I'll teach you how to kind of freeform it a little bit and we'll talk about that like we did with my last video the Tom Waits one take one last look we talked about using a chord chart to kind of free up your mind to sing and not necessarily obsess about the note for note thing both are excellent skills and both should be rehearsed all right but anyways we're in measure three which is sorry ending three which is measure 50 in the tab C slash G chord, but we actually pinch at the beginning, six and two. Three, four, two, six, three, four, two. So just that pinch at the beginning, but then the same thing. Then the pinch again. That's it. So he has a sparse little thing going on there. So then the final time we do the verse in the chorus, we only get to measure 34, and then we jump to the coda. So he's basically just kind of tagging a different ending on the chorus. That's how I'm thinking about it. And in 53, the rhythm changes here. My life gone, or however he sings it. Sorry, I'm even messing it up because it's so out of the, out of the uh, ordinary for this song. We're doing one, two, and three, four, and so he totally messes with the rhythm that he's been doing. And it's that D slash F sharp. He walks it down. So we're pinching six and two. Then I do thumb pointer on four, three, right? After that. And the second half of the measure, same exact thing, but I am doing a D7. So now instead of my pinky being on the third fret of the B string, it's on the first. It's the same rhythm. Pinch, thumb, and pinch, thumb, and then to a G. Again, that weird rhythm that we saw earlier. Pinch, thumb, and thumb, and. So it might throw you off because your thumb is doing one, two, and six string twice in a row pinching six and two six three four two six three All right really weird especially when you try to sing it and put the vocals on it it feels pretty unnatural but I'm sure he just felt it out and maybe it did feel natural to Patrick or maybe he did have to rehearse it a million times this kind of stuff we never know it's our best guess uh, 55 back to the D all I'm doing is lifting up that pinky at the end there G. Now we're in measure 57. Here we got that again, a quick little hammer on. That's like a 16th note. It's 6, 3, 4, 2, and then hammer open to 2. 3, 4, 2. So hammer on the 5th string. Yeah, nothing new, right? We had that hammer on before, I think. 58. Just a normal C chord. 5, 3, 4. It does it four times, but the last time you lift the first finger. One, two, three. You lift it. Back to a D. And 60 here. Just ends on a thumb on four. One and two and And then again, a little fill in 61. 62. Let's talk about 63 here, 
for a second, hammering into the G slash C. So I'm just doing the whole, well, we're coming from the G, then we're lifting the whole thing up, but this time we're hammering into the C with the G in the bass. So I'm hammering all three of them down at the same time. And four, three, sorry. So we do that hammer on into the C slash G. And then right after I do six, I'm lifting it into a G so that they both go up. But then I'm putting my pinky back down, or my pinky down and then back down on the second string. So real slow. Three, four. camera straight forward here so we're gonna look at the chord chart and I'm gonna talk you guys through this so it's great to obsess on the picking and you should because it makes you a much better player to get it note for note don't cut corners and just go at it how Patrick's doing it you learn a lot that way um, but sometimes you just want to play the darn song and you also want the headspace if you're gonna sing it to really be able to execute the singing so you don't want to obsess with what's happening with the right hand I've said this before, but we'll do it together because it's always great to start this way. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on the intro because you're not singing at the same time, so you can focus on getting it pretty accurate. But when it comes to singing it, we're just going to start with strums. So we got this D with the F sharp. I've damned the awards, this world around, another city, another town. Another friend to say goodbye. Another girl to sit and cry. So you want to get used to that, and until your intuition knows when those chord changes are happening, right? And then I'm just going to do a very basic pattern the whole time. That's step two, or this is step two. <laughs> Six, three, four, two. I'm just going to do that one for every chord, so. I've damned the awards This world around Another city Another town It's too high. Another friend To say goodbye sounds weird without those fills so maybe you're picking it all the same except for those little fills to sit and cry right simplifying it a little bit so that's how I would start and then as you, as you want to get better at it you're gonna cheat in a little bit more of that accurate tab do those fills a little bit more but remember just like with learning the song playing it sometimes you're gonna have to sing it note by note I've demoed this in other videos I'm not gonna do it here because I feel like it's gonna make this one pretty darn long but like that riff, you might have to do sit and do sit and you want to practice it alone a hundred times, knowing exactly where each syllable is fitting in on those hits. I don't know the song well, so I don't know how to do that yet. But no joke, that hard little fill part with singing, that might take you 20 minutes of just hashing out to sit and or whatever he's doing, right? Where you're to sit, okay, when, when is the guitar hitting at the same time as a syllable? Rehearse that, the, you know, the first one beat, first two beats of the measure, get it, get it, get it, break it down, right? Get that microscope out and, and do it in the tiniest bite-sized chunks that you can. Um, and then the chorus, let's do the chorus here. Whoops, I think it was just to sit and, that part's easier, it's, it's harder later in the song, but you know what I'm alluding to. And then the chorus here, let's just do that slow. And it's many miles I've spent on this road. It's many a mile I have gone. So it's only on the 
this road where you got that quick G slash C. If you're just gonna do it simple, right? It's many a mile. Hey baby, I've spent all this road. It's many a mile I've gone. Come take a seat. And then you'd work about getting all the details in. Hi, come say hi to everybody. This is Indigo. No one's here, but we're filming it. And then they'll watch you later on the internet. Why do you look so sad? Indigo has been sick. Are you still sick? No. No? What's made you sad then? What's making you sad? The falling wilderness. To me in the, to you. in the car. In the car? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. He's being rude to you in the car. Hmm. Hmm. Should we go talk to him? I will talk to him for you, okay? Hmm. Can you do that again for everybody? Hmm. Hmm. Does it make you feel better when you do that? A little bit. It does. Okay, we'll go talk to Jethro, okay? Okay. Hmm. You feel like this. But after we talk to him, we'll feel like this, right? Happy? Especially when this guy comes up here and gets him. And he gets him real good, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, let's shut it off. Hey, guys. One note on singing. If anyone would like me to break down the melody of this song and do a little singing lesson, I'm happy to. For me, if you want to sing, the most important thing is to actually learn the melody on your guitar. And then when you have that abstract concept solid on the guitar, you could tab it out. From there, your ear can really understand it. Then you start singing every syllable exactly where it should be. And for my ear and for my singing, that was probably the greatest thing that I did, was just taking the time to slowly tab out the vocal melodies by ear. If you want me to help you do that, comment below and we'll do it to more videos. But I highly encourage everyone to start doing this and checking out some of my other videos where I do just that. Whew. Slow run of the intro, measure one through 13. Two, three, four. Let's do the verse and we'll tag the first ending on here. So from 14 all the way through, kind of a long one to 42. One, two, three, four. Confusing, isn't it? But we did it. That's the idea. 
If you need to slow me down, go to your little gear icon, change the playback speed. Not only can you do 0.75 or 1.25 if I'm too slow or fast, but you can go to custom and tweak it even smaller. It's a really great tool. Just hit that little custom button after you go to the playback speed. You can do it by point increments of 0.5. All right, because that verse is long and tricky, we're gonna take it again from 13, but then we're gonna do the second ending. So we will jump then from, you to, I don't know, and we'll go 36 straight into uh, whatever the heck ending two is, 43, I think. And I'll see if I can fit all this on my screen. It's getting really tight. This is a lot of info. I recommend you guys print this stuff. It's easy to print. You should probably print it. Um, I like to, what, what I'm, I'm about to make excuses for myself. I'm not going to do that. Let's just play this song. Taking it from 14, 3, 4. Sorry, so we got to jump to 43 here. Three, four. Do the whole verse again, then just with ending three. Let's do ending three slow. So measure 50. Three, four. You guys, got it. And again, we go back to the top, do a chorus, and then cut to the coda. So let's take it from 53 to the end nice and slow. Three, four. I'm still learning this one with you guys, so it's good that we're, we're struggling through it together, right? I've been playing for 30 years. I still make mistakes. I still have to go super slow, obsess, and practice. That's part of the process. Don't get discouraged, okay? And if you do, comment down below, and we will lift you up, and you'll nail it. Yeah. If you made it to the end, you are freaking awesome. Well done. Go slow. We never learn this stuff overnight. It takes time. I've been playing for 30 years, and guess what? It still takes time going through this. It's one thing to learn it. It's another thing to get it up to speed. It's yet another thing to memorize it, and then it's yet another thing to sing on top of it. So there are many steps to this, but I want to encourage you. Don't feel like, you know, oh, this song's going to take me six months to learn. You know what? It might, but guess what? You, once you go through that six months, you've not only learned this song, but you've so much better prepared yourself to learn every other folk song that exists in the world. So each one of these big term goals, you're doing way more than just achieving that goal. Yes, you're going to play the song eventually, but you're also now you also now have a skill set to help you tackle so many other folk tunes. And I swear, I now have well over 150 tutorials on this channel. 
well over 100. I don't know. I've got like, I've got like 300 videos. I don't know how many are like specific tutorials. But I've learned and taught so many songs that I promise you this is the case. A lot of these tricks are just repeated maybe over a different chord or it's the same right hand pattern but over a different series of notes. So the more of these songs that you get, you're just going to start to more quickly learn songs in the future. So if you made it this far, congrats. And a double congrats because you're doing so well. That's my encouragement. All right.